Good afternoon and welcome to the Seminole Pro Tour. We're here at Fiddlesticks in Canton, Ohio. We're preparing to watch a match between Alex Pegaline and Dennis Hatch. This is on the one loss side. This is one of the final four on the one loss side. We've got a winner's side final coming up here immediately following this event, which will feature Johnny Archer and Earl Strickland. But for right now, I'm J.R. Kelver, and joining me in the booth is the lovely Angel Paglia. Angel, welcome. Thank you very much. Happy to be here and couldn't be more excited to be here during this match. Excellent. This match is awesome. I'm sure it's going to be some great play and uh, glad everybody can be around here and I hope you enjoy it getting a woman's point of view. <laughs> well, I'm sure that, that uh, it's going to be spot on. I'm thinking a lot of people are really respecting your game nowadays. They're, you're finishing high. Where did you finish third at the, the Ultimate Ten Ball? Yes, I did. One of my best finishes so far since I've been really practicing and working on my game and stuff. And uh, I've been getting some lessons from Earl Strickland now after that third place finish. And so I can feel a lot of changes happening. And But most of all, being out here, I guess, just coming and playing with the big boys, you know, doing my best and learning so much new stuff. So I guess it'll continue right now and hopefully it won't be too off, you know, with the patterns and stuff. But they're, I mean, these players, I mean, they all pretty much play the same patterns, you know, and watching them for so long, you can almost predict what they're going to do. But yes, um, out there, just to answer a question, yes, I do remember the Paglia dance and uh, it is quite humorous. So. <laughs> Thank you for that. We're getting ready for the lag here. Dennis is at the table, and Alex is making his way, so I think we're going to be prepared. Now, the match that you see in behind you also is Rodney Morris and Darren Appleton. We'll try and keep you updated on that as scores come in. I believe that has just started. And they're still at nothing, nothing. So you'll be able to keep score with us in the background here. So any predictions for the match? You know, actually, with this particular one, um, no. I, I really don't. I think they're both playing great this tournament. I think they're both hungry. Alex has been kind of gone for a while and then he came back in and he started playing in a, you know his first few tournaments and he got second and then he kept doing I mean he kept I mean he's been at the top every time and honestly um Dennis Hatch looks really hungry this tournament well, really hungry like you know I mean I've been watching him play but particularly his focus has been really good his eyes haven't really been leaving the table they haven't been on you know any of the his surroundings it's really hasn't left the felt which sometimes he does look around a little bit so um, I just think he looks really hungry, so it should be a great match. Yeah, I expect him to play and make a lot of balls. Mm -hmm. He's an aggressive player. He's smart. He knows when to play safe, how to play safe. And, uh, you know, I hate to say it, I, I put him as a favorite over Alex in this match. Even though Alex is just coming off a win from Clash of the Titans, mm -hmm. Alex is playing good pool. But there's something about the fire in Dennis right now that's kind of leading me to sway that way. And, I mean, it's only, you know, 50.5% versus 49.5. It's really that close in my mind. Yeah, I think that's fair to say, too. Um, I haven't been watching too much of Alex's break, but I think we all know that Alex has a phenomenal break, too. So I've been seeing on this uh, stream table here that some people are breaking absolutely wonderful. I think they're racking a little bit easier, but then I've heard some people where they're breaking just as great, but they're having trouble racking the balls. So not really due to the table, but sometimes people just rack them differently. And right. uh, getting those two corner balls to freeze and not, you know, gaff racking themselves in a, in a rack your own, um, that's what's going to be really interesting for me this match is to see who's, who's really taking um, advantage of, of having, you know, making balls on the break. Well, we can see Dennis has actually taken particular attention to make sure that that one ball's froze. And honestly, that makes a difference between a win and a loss a lot of times in this format. These guys, world champions, uh, making a ball and getting a shot might be the difference, you know, just once or twice might be the difference between a, a win and a loss. 
Well, I hope they have an easier time racking than me trying to drink my hot tea with my headset on, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right, so it looks like uh, Darren Appleton took the first game um, in the match against Rodney Morris over here while we're waiting for this uh, table to break. Right. Hopefully they can help us keep track of the score just as much. Uh, obviously a big thing. Everybody wants to know who we're going to see coming up next round. Now next round is Johnny Archer and Earl Strickland. We see Dennis putting the earplugs in and he's getting ready to go to business here. He's went out and prepared himself mentally. We'll watch Darren break. Safe trip, Larry. Larry Neville just dropped by to say goodbye and we're making sure that he's on his way home safely. Uh, looks like Rodney's going to go to the table back there, folks, with an open table. Open shot on the one is what it looks like. All right, so here we go. Show is on the road. Oh, parked Whitey beautifully. Sure was, and that, the second ball tried to go right in the side. He barely missed it by just a hair there. Now, my arithmetic's right. We're going to see... Mr. Pagalion getting up at this 1-2. Now, this is actually not the worst shot in the world. You can make this combo and get position by going rail first, but I don't think he wants this. Yeah, isn't it kind of funny? You know, I haven't seen them push out too much this tournament. I've been finding that the men really, they don't need to push out. If they do, they're pushing out into a jump jump or a kick or something like that but it seems like in the beginning of the matches when some people might think it's a time to be more aggressive because you've got really you know what I mean it's the beginning of the match it seems like they're a lot more tentative and they want the other person to make the first mistake I think it sets a precedence and I'm noticing that strategy of um, of the men it, it's kind of interesting I mean I, I'm actually learning so much from it because you know right there I would think that that would be a time that he could have been aggressive but you know Dennis didn't even like it and gave it back so you know, and that's a fine line to kind of balance on is, you know, you go between trying to score first and trying not to let the other guy have an easy point first. And I guess it just goes back to every game counts. It doesn't matter if it's 1-1 or not. They're going to play it just like that. But that was an excellent shot by Alex. It really nice was. Nice control. And that's what Dennis wanted. He did not want that ball to hit the, the cue ball until the very end. So it, it looks like he has about an inch gap when I look from the clear view over here. I mean, he has some options, but this is a pretty simple safety if he fins it and controls the cue ball. And I, I don't see him putting it behind the five. I think if he's going to shoot the safety, he's going to try to get under the eight. Yeah, he's definitely going to go for gold here. Mm -hmm. But Nick you just have the right amount of English on that ball, though. That's what's so important. You got a little fast here, and I yeah. think you got too much spin. But you're dealing with, like, how the cue ball comes off of the object ball at the same time. How much English are you using, and how much is it sliding out there? Mm -hmm. But he still didn't really leave much of a shot, except, you know, I think Dennis will fire this down in the corner. At least I, I mean, I would. I know that's actually a great safety, but I just sometimes get a little impatient, so we'll see what he does. It's a, it's a really good two-way shot because he has a five balls he can put this cue ball the cue over ball by the, the he can put it over behind the four but this is what i like was saying look alex you play a shot like that you're going to get a kick i guarantee you i'm not going to take a flyer mm -hmm. and this is the type of game that alex likes to play mm -hmm. believe it or not he doesn't want it played on him he likes to play this game and it, He's, Dennis is coming right out and challenging Alex. Mm -hmm. This is great. I mean, look at how productive that shot was, you know. But you have to control it and just hit it perfect, really. A little bit of low cue on mm -hmm. this one, and I'd use a little bit of low left, possibly. He bent it in there, but he didn't get the action that he wanted, and he missed the ball. And he definitely wanted ball in hand on this one ball because there was only really two pockets that it would go in. <laughs> so. 
I mean, you've got your way upper left-hand corner or this side. <laughs> but let's see if Dennis draws out of this. I thought he yeah, was going to give them. I think he'll go high and come two rails, a little bit of high left. Right. Okay. Well, get was... closer to the ball, I think, just so he can try to draw it back. He can go pretty much straight. He wanted straighter, I think, to draw it back for the side. He looks pretty straight from this angle, but I he's, think he wanted a little more. He's not. He's going to have to do a little bit of uh, monkey business here. And that's oh, he the monkey business. Right over. Yeah, he had to miss the six and the seven. That wasn't as easy as it looked. Yeah, this makes it a little bit harder. But here I think he has to hit high high inside on it and also get it out, you know, to shoot the five in the same corner because I don't think it goes in the other corner, does it? No, it does not. So he's going to he's gonna hit this more with spin yeah. than follow and get around that five. He, had he just hit That's that what Earl follow. says. Let the spin do the work. There you Forgot go. Forgot about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the spin gets it around the table. The follow will yeah. get you inside that, that line too much. Now he should go high right, back and forth, cross table here. I never did like this. Oh. Boy, speed Boy, was key there. Well, he had a four-inch window that was good. You know, the other way... He's coming at the six ball, and he gets to play it up into the seven, you know, and he gets the seven out of the game. Yeah, even though some of these things aren't necessarily outs the way that everybody would shoot them, even if it's not a survival match, I think Dennis just plays really good cue ball control, so he'll play those shots because he really thinks he can get right where he needs to be, and he, it, you know? Yeah, that's And most of the time things. he does. Yeah, you know, you're talking about an extremely talented player. You know, somebody's in the U.S. Open finals at the age of 19, and it kind of goes without saying, he's got a skill that, you know, others wish they had at certain times. Yeah, his cue ball control is really good. Smooth player, always mm -hmm. knows the right shot. That's what I like about Dennis. You get in a conversation with Dennis, he'll, he knows the right shot. Eh, it wiped its feet on the way in. <laughs> A little bit of craziness, but uh, Dennis is going to take a one nothing lead here. So it was that safety that was key. It gave him possession and uh, was really important just because that ball only went in those two pockets. It's always that one that one shot in each rack. Whether you're a great player, champion, whether you're an amateur player, it's just anything. It's always that one shot that's so key that seems like it won you the game or lost you the game. And the trick is knowing which one it is. Yeah. What is it going to be? It's usually on, you know, looking back. <laughs> and it's too late at that point. <laughs> Hindsight being twenty twenty, right. Well, as we sit here and we uh, prognosticate, that's one of the big things that we do is we try and point out the issues that we see. And Dennis is going to deal with the rack area. He's thinking that he needs to reset some of those indentations that are there from previous players racking. Take a look at what he can rack up here, though. Any update here on uh, Morris and Appleton? To be honest with you, I'm not sure what happened last game, but we'll try to get you some factual information here. Uh, but Rodney is obviously running out here, not too happy about his position on the eight, but he's a phenomenal shot maker, so... Got right back in line. He ran it tight to that corner. but. And we'll give you guys an update when we see a coin moved here because I believe that Darren is still only on one. I do not see anything on the right rail. Rodney Morris picks up that game. Well, it looked like he took some speed off of his break. Now, that 10 and ball doesn't count in the side pocket, does it? No, I believe it only counts in the bottom back two pockets. Exactly. But he did. He took some, uh, he took a lot of speed off of his break and yeah, uh, was very productive. Well, here's a here, here's a problem ball right away. 
if he makes the one six, he may not be able to get back down for the one in a likable manner. This is actually fairly tough. Yeah, this is probably going to be a safety. He was hoping not to make it. I was going to say because the nine ball could be coming come into play. And you know what's so funny on those shots is you put them up table, you know they're going to bump balls, and you always hope that it bumps on the right side. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the right, not to the left. Do or die type thing. Ten ball is hanging in the pocket here, so that's always going to be in the back of my mind, you know, if I'm looking at this table and... Uh, I think Alex is wondering if he can nick the side of it because if he can nick the side of it, he could thin the one. That two ball is kind of in the way, but I would be trying to get that cue ball between the two and the four ball and bring it back up table, leaving the one down at the bottom rail. But he is jacking up. Maybe he, sees, maybe he can make it. I think he's going to have to jump it a hair no, like he did. He, he went for it. He went for it. He wanted to actually go to the side rail and back through the four and the three for position, which was a very confident shot to shoot, and uh, he was fortunate here. Well, Dennis, he has a, a, a one of those little gifts that the balls will give you where it's a little tough, but it's still workable, where you can use the rail and the eight ball if you want. Hit the one into the rail. There you go. Let the eight kill it and go up table. I, I was wondering whether he was going to go around the seven or not, but I like what he did here. Mm -hmm. I love seeing that when the ball's <laughs> real close to another ball down table. You go, oh, uh, free safety here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. I know the ones on the bottom rail now. Yeah. Well, Alex doesn't have a safety here. Um, I honestly would probably be at 80% on going for this ball and bringing the, the cue ball back down for the two. Um, almost even a medium stroke, which some people think that it's a crazy shot to shoot, but, uh, you know, if you feel comfortable with it, I think that it beats the percentages of any safety right here, but we'll see if he has something up his sleeve that I don't see. He could go rail first, of course, and try to kick it up table, and that's what he might do because then the cue ball will slide underneath the eight. So he gets a free shot at the ten as well. Yeah, I, I actually for. think he's going to do that, to be honest with you. He's going to kick. Oh, he didn't. He went for it. And he made the ball and did not get position. Huh. <laughs> he, he does. See, it you know what I mean? It seemed like better. it was a really makeable shot there, but I almost am thinking that the kick might have been a better option. But then if he makes it and he's stuck behind the eight, that's a loss of game with the 10 in the hole. So, first instinct was uh, go for that cheese, <laughs> win that game. But it's not always the right one, as Alex has taught us. But, uh,. It looks like he's going to try and go off the bottom rail here, swipe and take the, bank the two back onto mm -hmm. the bottom rail. He might even get a free whack at the 10 here. He might scratch mm -hmm. off the 10 as well. No, absolutely. But, yeah, it's a, very, it's a pretty good kick save. He didn't dig into that cue ball. He usually digs into it. I mean, he's a champion, he, you know. So he must uh, not be trusting how much... Well, he only missed it by a quarter right inch, yeah. and a quarter inch to the right was a perfect mm -hmm. shot. So he, he, but how far would the two ball have went with that speed, though? The two ball probably would have went fairly decent, but yeah. not, you know, with a half inch over, mm -hmm. it'll dig. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks like Dennis is, has his eyes on. Uh, yeah, this is trouble. Three for ten. Alex. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good look at how much of the ten balls hanging. Now I went out before the set started, and I was playing with Dennis a little bit and uh, putting all the balls in the hole. Two balls do not fit in the opening of the side pocket or the corner pockets in this table. Mm -hmm. And they've got a pretty deep shelf. You can see right next to his cue, see the chalk. There's two, three chalks, or two and a half chalks deep that shelf is. Give you an idea how tough this table is. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys an update on Darren Appleton and Rodney Morris. It is three to one Rodney um, with Darren at the table shooting the one and the, the rack looks pretty open here as you guys can see from this overhead view but I did get a confirmation from Rodney it was through you guys got those signals worked out huh 
<laughs> well, just you know, I actually got lucky. I looked over there right after I uh, broke the balls, and he had happened to be looking over at the stream, and I was able to hand the 3 1 and got the nod. So <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was just luck, lucky timing. I think they all know that we're doing updates on the stream, which uh, all these players care about the support from you guys on the rail. They all do, every single one of them. So it's. Uh, it's nice to see them being willing to keep you, keep us updated when it's kind of hard. All right, so we got some trouble there with the eight nine, and the four. The, the four, I don't know whether he's going to try and use it. At first, I thought he was even going to, you know, use the two mm -hmm. to get this broke up. But the three is so bad, and the four would be next. I don't really see too much hope here at this point, but. He's Dennis Hatch. He might be able to draw this ball, hit the top end of the eight, yeah. and spin right up at the three. I was going to say, it looks like he might stun that, you know, kind of over a little bit and try to clip it. He did. He tried to clip it. I think he probably tried to clip the top of the eight, though. Right. Now, I, I mean, why not, right? Go, right. I instantly go to safetyville here and <laughs> put this cue ball down behind the eight nine and see whether he's got it in his mind, too. Well, well see, this is what's so beautiful about the game, and... For people out there that are listening, you know, when you try to bring your game up to like another level, which is what I'm doing right now, is it not just playing safe and putting yourself, it's playing safe, breaking out the problem ball at the same time and giving it back. It's just another little piece to that puzzle. Um, you know what I mean? Like I would have played safe like you did, but it's always remembering, why don't I go into those balls and break it out? And I think that's what he tried to do, but he ended up not being productive at it. But what a great shot it is if you think about it. It's like it it's just opens it up for you to, I don't know. You just don't see it too much at a at a, a good level. You see that at great levels. Well, it, let me even say that a different way. Sure. These guys make balls so well that this game is no longer about making balls and getting position. It's yeah. about solving problems. Yeah. And the Very problems well that he's he's dealing with is the four eight. So he looks at it as one of the things I can do is break these balls up, mm -hmm. thus clearing one of my problems if I can keep control of the table. And hey, look at the four balls there to make the automatic mm -hmm. safety. Yay. Yeah, absolutely. So, so he he they're, they're problem solving. Mm -hmm. And you know, honestly, you're looking at some of the best problem solvers on the pool table in the world. Even though that did not solve a problem. No, it didn't. Else. Alex, you know, honestly, he doesn't look um, focused. And the one thing about Alex, I watch him play so much, is that he doesn't uh, really show, like, emotion unless it's really happy emotion or he's trying to make people laugh. So he looks pretty down on himself right now. And Dennis just looks really focused. So some of those predictions out there with the, you know, with Dennis taking this match could possibly do it. But this would be a great great bank here into the 8-9 break it up and hopefully get position and I don't think he liked that I don't think he liked that at all Angel's right on it with all the her knowledge uh, Angel you've been playing in a lot of the Seminole tours this year haven't you yeah I've made every one except for the first one this year but I'm really really lucky I got a, a sponsor um, and his name's Lucky and he's a great supporter of the game and everything, and he's the one that's really been able to help me come out here and play in all the men's events. Because, you know, it's hard for me to make a living while I'm still learning and working with Earl and trying to do certain changes and stuff. But, uh, yeah, after all these years, I finally got, you know, I got able to get out here and do it. So I'm taking advantage regardless if I get knocked around or not. I'm not going to let my pride get hurt. I'm going to come out here and just know it's going to make me a stronger person. <laughs> Well, you know, that's one of the things uh, we were talking about you the other day, believe me. We were talking about how impressive it is that you're out here playing and taking on all comers. You don't care how it goes. You're going to nope. give it a shot. And what that's going to do to your learn. game is just, oh, yeah. I don't want to be the next person you play. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to teach me. It's going to get me tougher. You know, I've been struggling a little bit heart-wise, confidence-wise, and stuff like that. But I think that this is going to make me a lot, a lot tougher. Well, this is a pretty uh, textbook out here. Um, I'm not really sure if he got straight on this or not. Probably not. He's just going to hit that little bit of high left. Come down there by the nine. Uh -oh, Hoping not to get nine. straight. He's behind the nine. Wow. Even straight wouldn't have been great. He could have banked out of it, but he's little, in total little too disbelief confident. right now. He, he 
talking about it. He doesn't he like said, it. He said, I forgot the rail. <laughs> I forgot the rail. Uh, I think he forgot. I could have come shorter or I could have come longer. Hindsight, hindsight, everyone. He. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, I the way I like, well, you have a couple options. He can go into the short rail here and come to the bottom rail and go into the eight. But uh, he's, you know, got another option to actually go to the bottom rail, side rail, and down underneath it and kick it up table. But he's got to hit it pretty hard. He's going to go short rail. He's going to bend his ball with low left. And he's going to have to kick beyond the nine. Hit it soft. He's going to want to hit that on the other side of the eight, though. I mean, if he hits it on the right side. See, I like going up it. past the 10, believe it or not, with velocity, side row, hit the 8. Yeah, that's what I was saying, but I think he'd have to hit it so hard to get the 8 up. Here's, there's safeties there underneath the 9, but he doesn't have to get it up table. He only has to bank it so that it doesn't sell out. He's side. going for that first that he, first shot. See, he doesn't there have to is. hit it so hard that there. Now, see, he's getting the, the play back in the game. Mm -hmm. Oh, he did give a, not, yep. give a shot. See, the other way, if he hits it just a little softer... He can keep the safe in on the nine with the Q, and he's only banking the eight above the corner pocket. It's more like a one pocket shot, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? If you're really in trouble, but uh, this here, he's he's introduced the other pockets to the game is all I'm saying. Ah, this feeling when you've made so, you know, so many errors and you've got this key shot to get yourself in the match at two nothing, that feeling right there and you make that ball. And say, well, I'm still out of line. I'm still struggling, but <laughs> one ball at a time. <laughs> I know he feels it. He's been here a million times, but I know he feels it. It was an absolutely wonderful shot, though. Really he's was. just, yeah, he's just going to make this ball and bring it around two rails. Oh, no. He moved he physically. He up when he, but I mm -hmm. think he had shot the shot. Yeah. I think he had seen that he missed the ball, and he was surprised that he just yeah. missed the ball. It looks like an update score. I don't believe Darren has won a game yet, so I think it is 4-1 Rodney Morris. Um, if I notice a correction, I'll let you guys know. You just got to stroke this ball. He came too, too far. Deep. He's overhitting it. Yeah. He's you know, now, on this shot, I like going to the side. Really? Yeah. How do you like it? You like I, banking it? No, I cut this ball on the and side. The Keep in mind, these are only two. They're less than two balls opening at the front of these side pockets. So uh, just to give you an <laughs> idea, there's more. That, there's usually two and a half balls on most pockets. This is a good shot. That's how Earl would tell me to shoot it. <laughs> I still like this side, though. <laughs> We're going to take a second here to thank one of our sponsors here from Grand Touring. He didn't move the last one. He went from the one to the three. I think we're... He, he marked the score from the one to the three. So he must not have marked his last game, so that means that it's 4-3, Rodney. That's what it looks like. We're trying to get the, the guess on the, the score here, folks. You're hearing us. A oh little God. chatter in the background. <laughs> I didn't know we were on. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. We right. like to sneak up on you there <laughs> yeah. with the audio. So score correction, it is 4-3 Rodney with Darren Appleton breaking. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome pool here, folks. I, I, I think it's just great to be in this same room. 50-something champions were here to, this week, and we're down to basically the final six guys, and there isn't one of them that couldn't win this event from here. Absolutely, I agree. 
I changed my flight to watch it through the finals. I had to leave at 5 in the morning. <laughs> you sound like me when... When I first came on tour, I used to make sure I left Monday morning. Yeah. I wanted to be there Sunday night for the finals. Uh, it was just me. I wanted to see great pool. Mm -hmm. I was a, as much of a fan as I was a player, you know what I mean? How did I know that I would be? It's just about the learning. I mean, that's why, even though I'm going through so many changes, I'm coming to these tournaments and playing because I want to learn more of the patterns and I think everybody does when I was commentating with Chris too I mean you're always evolving your patterns are always evolving no matter how good you play you know there's always the right shot to take and stuff but they're still evolving because I mean at least that's what I've been told by all of them so there's nothing better than coming out here and watching and dissecting everybody's move so was it Alex that took a, a, a break I don't know which one okay. would be credited with that break, but I do know that... It's a good time for Alex to do that, though, if if he was the one that instigated it. Um, you yeah. don't want to get too far behind. I, you know, in nine ball, it's like you can be down 7 nothing and you can win. You can come back and win. In ten ball, it's a lot difficult, more difficult to come back and win. Well, I believe the two goes up by the seven, so we're looking at a run out here. Pretty good break. Now, yeah, Dennis lost Whitey. It went all around the table. Now, if, yeah, if the two goes past the seven, yeah, he just has to basically stop this ball, leave himself a little bit of an angle like that, and then he can come, you know, right out for the three ball. He's going to have five. He's going to have the four right there, the five, and, yeah, there's really no key, sh key shot except for this two ball right here, just getting on the three. He just wants to miss Perfect. the nine. Keep an angle. And at this point, is there a problem ball? I'll, I'll throw the floor to you. Really, there's not. Um, I would I would say them, I mean, well, the, you know, getting to another ball, there's really not any problems. Um, the only one that's on the rail is obviously the seven ball. I think it's. But it, as long as you get on the five ball right here to get on the seven, you got no problem. Right. He just didn't want to get mm -hmm. straight. You want, but you do want to get straight on the seven, though. You want to get Definitely. as straight as you can, mm -hmm. but an angle so that you can get your cue off the rail and yes. go down uh, about one diamond height. Now he's straight in here. He's, he's drawing draw it back and shooting it up in that other corner. That, right. Absolutely. And then you see here, whether you get an angle or you don't get an angle, he can go on either side of the eight. So that's actually a beautiful shot since he got straight. No hesitation whatsoever. These guys know these patterns so well. Now one of I like the shooting the nine in the side here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nine in the side. Keep an angled up table towards the ten so you can just slide right at it. Hey, he went a little bit far. He doesn't matter. He can go up to the side rail, mm -hmm. back over. And I was talking with Dennis earlier, by the way, and he said as tight as these pockets are, his table at home is tighter. So don't be surprised if you see Dennis, Dennis settle in on this table because he shoots with this equipment at home all the time. But he's going to be a beast. And look at those shots that he just made. <laughs> yeah, we got some of our chatters uh, out there. They're, they're letting everybody know Angel's addicted to pool. I, I think she is. I think I, I think it's you know pretty much in your blood. How long have you been playing? I've been playing since I was nine years old. My father's a great player. He got me started, so it's been a family thing with me. And uh, I mean, it's it's my full time job. I quit playing the violin, synchronized swimming. I quit basically everything. I could have went to the Olympics probably with synchronized swimming. And so yeah, I am addicted. But I think what you're hearing in my voice and everything right now is the passion that I have because I'm putting everything on the line to come out here and win a championship. And you know, this is the best opportunity to play with these great players and to do it. Because um, in the end, it's just a rack of balls. It's not really who you're playing. But there is a certain energy in competition and drive to win out here on this men's tour here. Sure. It's a different type of aggressive energy that is addictive. So I'm not crazy. Everybody here makes me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you right now... Uh, when I was younger and I had my decision to play pool or use my engineering degrees, I, I, I went looking for a job. I don't know, you know, I, I won't lie. Jobs were just scarce. And I said, you know, I really wasn't that disappointed. I wanted to play pool. And I said, 
if I wanted golf or, you know, any other single activity professional sport, I wouldn't be able to just throw down some money and start playing with the best players in the world and learning from them. Mm -hmm. I'd have to earn my way up through the ranks. And, yeah. You know, th here you have more talent in one tournament that I've seen in years. And, you know, you can come in and put your money down and play with these guys, and that's mm -hmm. a great thing. Well, and it's nice, and the guys are treating me with a lot of respect here, too. I mean, they all, t you know, tell me that, you know, over 20 and 30 players in the entire field they don't they don't have to play better than I do and that's pretty awesome to get that kind of support you know what I mean and the scores and the matches don't necessarily reflect it but I'm learning so much so I'm very happy but this has been an interesting rack here um, and Alex certainly needs to get something going if these if all of us are not are gonna see some type of a match here um, everything looks like it goes but it's still you wonder about really where you need to get on each ball so here I'm thinking that Alex is going to go for it, and he's going to try to kind of like snip draw it, I guess you could say, and hold it there just to get on the other side of the two ball so that he can go to the rail and, and stay on the left side of the three. Because, well, actually, he'd like to be on the right side of the three because of the four, but... I'll even go you one better. He's going to sure. cinch this one. He'll try and hit it softly with draw. Mm -hmm and hold an angle so that he can go straight from the two to the three. Right. And he wants to keep that angle straight. He doesn't want to have to play with the rail if he doesn't have to. But let's see what the true angle is here because we don't know. But yeah. every ball's makeable here, but it all comes down to how much he moves on this, this, this cue from this one ball. I'm curious if he's going to try, try to go to the rail here. He did. He Look at this. He made the 10. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> wow. wow. Fantastic. And it's really hard when you don't see that something's wired, like, or you know, that it, that it can do that. I didn't see that shot, JR. I don't think you did either. I didn't see it. I really didn't. I'm in amazement. Well, that can change some things. Confidence booster, creative. <laughs> well, I think uh, we're going to see Alex have a little bit different feeling at the table now. You know, you, you, well, yeah, he he's going to laugh. He's loosening up. <laughs> oh, look at this. Now he's in. And now he's Rodney. trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Alex wants to get the crowd rolling. It's going to get his blood rolling. He's even getting Rodney going. Now, is that score five to one over there with. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how one shot Maybe. can just change the energy in a room for everybody? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Talk about being addicted to pool. I think all these guys are addicted to pool. You kidding me? All right, so score update, though. It is going to be 5-3. Um, Rodney over Darren Appleton just breaking. And uh, let's see what Alex does with his break here. Brought them all down table, but uh, Nobody they home. aren't finding their way home. Uh-oh, this is uh, yeah. connect the dots. Look at how you might get in on the two and not have to move your cue ball more than two feet from shot to shot. Four to the five is the big one that you move on. Well, after this shot, of course. He's in dead line here. And this is looking like an easy point yeah, for Dennis. Yeah, because the five to the six is like so simple for him to be able to get on that seven, which obviously only has one corner pocket to go in, so yeah. This is where he needs to focus even harder. I've seen a lot of them just missing like, you know, really simple balls because the pockets aren't extremely tight. They're getting a little bit relaxed. And this is a pretty classic out, so. But Dennis is good about that, about not fumbling, you know. Well, see how he's pacing right now? Yeah. He's making sure he sees everything. Mm -hmm. and uh, He wants to know the exact place that he wants to be on the five. He's not, even though this is, you know, a Tom Cruise or a Cosmo, mm -hmm. he's going to sit down and say, I'm still going to pinpoint. And one of the big secrets to being a pro is you never relax and you understand the smaller you make your target, the more accurate you're going to be. Mm -hmm. So he gets up there and he put a little fine point on that ball and said, I'm going to put it right there, even though this is so easy. 
I mean, it was kind of difficult to mess up this rock, too, because no matter where I got on the six, he was fine. He could shoot the seven in the side. He could shoot the seven in the corner. Speed control really wasn't even an issue in right. this rack, so... Um, well, go ahead Dennis and think that there's no problems it. out there, and I guess mm -hmm. you'll find out what soon I'll enough that there one. is one. <laughs> well, I'll create one, I'm sure. <laughs> there is one. You know, and this is so, you know, funny, too. That I mean, the seven ball goes right between the nine and the ten, and I thought that it was, uh, it didn't go. Perfect speed by Dennis. This is that hill-hill rack that you always wish you would get, <laughs> you know, yeah. when you break the balls. There they are just sitting there, and you look like a champ. Mm -hmm. And got perfect on the nine just to be able to stop it like that. Um, and after a shot like that that Alex made, too, he really held his composure great. Take a second here as Dennis goes up. Five to one. Hear from one of our friends. Forty years of Q craftsmanship. A state-of-the-art production facility. Revolutionary design. When you step to the table, unleash the fury. fury. Precision craftsmanship. A player's cue ready for action. A cue with a sweet hit. A consistent hit. See the entire line of fury cues and unleash your fury. And we're back, folks. Oh, wow. We're checking out some of the action from the other table. We'll get you a score update here as Darren looks like he's finishing this rack. He overhit the nine ball tremendously and almost scratched in the corner. He wasn't too happy about that. We'll get you a score going right now. I'll charge you with that as I, uh, I'll run my mouth about this game here. <laughs> well, it looks like uh, they're going to set really pretty for Alex. He should be able to manage getting on the deuce. He doesn't have to get perfect on the three because the way the four is, he can. he's pretty much needing to get back on the other side of the four here. He should be able to manage this fairly well. I think a little bit of low, and he'll come out fine on this ball. If he does decide to follow it, He's just going to have to get past the eight to have the perfect angle. Okay, match score update for those of you who wanted to know. It's actually 5-5 five, five now. Tied between Darren Appleton and Rodney Morris. Someone had asked uh, who was playing, and then your featured match here is Alex Pagulion and Dennis Hatch. Alex is uh, not liking this too much. And I don't blame him. This is what I was saying is he just had to get past the eight. Now he's in trouble. And I, I think he overhit that. He wasn't setting up for the 2-4 combo, I believe. But there's a chance since the 4 to the 3, or the 3 to the 4, and then the 4 to the 5 is a little funny. So, I don't know. Depending on how I'm feeling, because I'm not right at the ball, so I couldn't see exactly the angle of how it goes. But, uh, oh, that's a little bit better I mean, for me how things were going I mean if I could come with the safety here like even thinning the two just to clip the right side of the four and bringing the cue ball down to the rail it's easy for Dennis to kick but I think yeah it's not I actually if I was at the table myself I might be thinking about that combo too and just bringing the cue ball up above the seven ball leaving the two right there right it with a little inside yeah that's a great it. shot and then you have an angle to get on the three easy. Perfect. Well, he can at least get to the three. This isn't the easiest shot in the world. This ball will have a tendency to run towards a nine, and he's not liking that too much. He didn't want to be on the rail. He wanted not, to be able to English. He doesn't have any it. options, right? Yeah, this one, he's, he's pretty much, he'd be risking so much on the make of the ball putting English. And where he gets on this three ball really doesn't matter as long as he leaves himself a shot and the five's right there. Four balls off the table, so just make the ball. 
<laughs> what a great shot. Was he, he was really close to the rail then. That's why he went to, for the bank. Wow, beautiful shot. Uh, and at this point here, he just needs to make sure he can make it, which he can. And he's going to cinch it. Yeah, he's, he's straight in. He's got no choice but to really sit there. If he wants to draw it back maybe an inch and give him a little bit, you know, more angle and draw it back some and give himself a little bit more off of the rail. But he's dead straight in, so. Well, it actually, it seems like he's got a hair of an angle to the rail, if I, if I was to look at it correctly. Yeah, he would have to really pound this ball in order to get it off, you know, off of the rail. But he needs a good angle to get on the six. Yeah, he doesn't want to have to follow two rails. Stopped it. But he's far enough off the rail that he can pound the five ball at this rail, or, you know, without worrying about missing the ball. Okay, well, I like just getting up far enough to make this six and trying to play position somewhere for the cue ball where it's about right now so he can cut the seven ball in the corner and come around two rails and play the eight in the side, you know, bringing the cue ball between the eight and the nine. That's the pattern that I like. I don't see him trying to get position, putting the cue ball between the 9 and the 10. And they always play very, very simple. So getting on the 6, just being able to hold that cue ball, you know, just finesse it if he doesn't leave himself jacked up here. <laughs> but now... Hey, look at him. He's shaking his head. He's like, ah, I'm supposed to be making this easier. Yeah. So, I mean, he can finesse the six in and hold it with a lot of extreme outside English. I love this shot. And just hold it right underneath that ten ball because it's a natural two-rail angle to come out for the eight in the side. Let's see if he plays it the same way. Well, when I try and finesse that ball, I actually give in. I don't try and draw it. I just use spin to impede it. I follow it with a below center stroke so that it really kills it and a little bit of right-hand English. Yeah. He's bringing it out to he the center. He wanted to go to the center of the table. Wow. That was a great shot. He barely got there. But with everything going wrong, I'm surprised. <laughs> he is he a kinda slightly it. scary shot there. Yeah. See, because then if you get really straight, you still kind of got to get on the eight. So it's not as easy as the champion would want it, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm sure he knows that. He's making faces. He's lost his playfulness. He's down to business right now. But I'm sure that if he runs out here, we're going to see if I still think he wants to find a way to play this eight in the side. It's the smartest shot. He's going to fall it onto the bottom rail. Come back up just like this, two rails. Some legs. Back in line. Back in line. Recovery. Now, if he has quite a bit of an angle on this ball, which he does have an angle, he can run three rails. He's perfect. He'll swing this with high right. Does he have that much angle? Yeah, he does. Doesn't look like he does, does it? But he does. Watch when he hits this, how much angle comes off that, that Great. ball. Great call. Perfect. That's why he's a world champion. <laughs> and Alex says, I'm taking another game. That's right, folks. The crowd seems to be happy about that. They want to see a match. They certainly do. I don't blame them. <laughs> I don't know. I think they're talking about breaks right now or something. I don't know what, what that was. Not quite sure either. Rodney Morris at the table with what looks like a really hard bank or even a possible safety. He made it look easy. He's another smooth stroking left handed player. Just got a pretty good roll there. I don't think Darren has a lot of room in between these balls to manipulate the one seven that you see pointing. But it does look like he has a shot nonetheless. Oh, 
Alex had the seven ball going, but it got kicked out, and he ended up making the deuce. Nine ten seems to be the only problem balls. Everything else looks very playable. He's making the one up in the corner and floating to the rail and back out, leaving himself an angle. Yeah, he won't. To get on the four. Nothing. Yeah, he, he won't get crazy here. He won't Just hit nice this little float over, over and out. It looks like he's hitting a little low on the cue ball, but I still think he's going to float to the rail and back out from the angle I'm looking at. There it is. Yeah. He missed it, though. Well, that's what... Something you cannot do. Yeah, you don't want to do that with Dennis. He's trying to figure out how come he's not focusing on that ball. He, he's focused. His head's just not in it. He's trying to figure it out. He even said, wow, oh. what's wrong with me? Yeah. Sometimes it's just taking, you know, you're looking at the cue ball, you're looking at the object ball, your eyes are going back and forth, but you just find yourself forgetting to look at one of them yeah. enough. That's what happens. Just a little bit of lack of focus. Hey, Chris. like we have a break here by Hatch. I don't see him on the floor. I think he's uh, off somewhere. I went to the <laughs> washroom. Let's take a second. To oh no, I'm sponsors. already to blame. I knew it. Yesterday when the computer was going out, it was my fault. Was because I was fault? talking with my Italian hands, and they were flying everywhere. They said I was pulling out things, <laughs> 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 pulling out the plugs of the computer. But it wasn't me, <laughs> and it's still not me. Well, we did get our uh, backup computer constructed <laughs> and working yesterday. But I think we, we had some errors with drivers, and we had uh, some updates coming in. We had newer drivers than what the updates were that were in our operating system, and Back to normal today. Yeah. Took us a couple of days to get, or a couple of hours to get some installs done correctly. Dennis just came right back out and wiped his hands, and he's off to the races now. I, I think you don't have to tell him that this is an easy win. No, he's getting all the opportunities in the world, Hatches, and he's taking all the opportunities that he's getting. See Even that, though it's a three-game difference. See that walk that he has right now? That, mm -hmm. That isn't the, you know, I'm worried walk. No, That's it's the, the swagger. It's, it's the <laughs> swagger. <laughs> there it's you the run-out swagger. <laughs> it's it. It's like, <laughs> check me out. I'm on the catwalk. Yep, that's yeah. what it is. So, you know what I like about Dennis's game so much? I haven't had a chance to see him play much until this tournament. You know, watching I watched one of his other matches almost whole, wholeheartedly. And he just stuns, like, pushes and stuns those balls around the table all the time. You know, he's never really, like, stroking them and smoothly putting them. I mean, he's really just, I think it's pretty much of a punch-stun game, kind of like Rodney Morris's game, kind of like Alex does it a lot. You know what I mean? But they have typically the same styles. He moves the cue ball around so beautifully. Well, kind of moves the cue ball around with a swagger. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the shot that's the... This is uh, key now. This is the payoff shot, and I believe he's going to follow down to the bottom rail, hit it with a little bit of left-hand English, and go straight up table. Might catch Do you like going the rail? I like going to the rail like yeah. that, right by the side pocket. Uh, making the sure only he point I was going to bring up is that there's a side pocket there. Mm -hmm. You have to say, I'm going to hit on one side or the other. Mm -hmm. If you don't, You'll hear the immortal words. That side pocket's been there for 200 years. <laughs> and yes, you will find it. <laughs> and if he hit the rail going in short, being worried about the side pocket, it could have been a whole nother shot. But that's the thing is that they're so confident. He's so confident right now that he was willing to play as far up as he possibly could get. Sure. 
He didn't look worried at all either, like he over, you know, he hit it too high. I think he planned it just that way. Not at all. I mean, he he wasn't worried at all. I mean, well, we're getting a good look at Darren Appleton's leave there. That one ball is all the way down at the other end of the table, and he's trying to sneak past the 5-9, see if he can get in between there with the cue ball, which is just over Dennis's left shoulder. And it looks like Rodney's stuck on five. Um, and this is a new rack here as we were commentating the other one, so it could typically be seven five now. I think it's it, it might be only six five because I think after five five Darren has only broke once. As, uh, Dennis puts the the rack down on himself here. Let's see if he's going to get these worked out. Let's see if we can even look in there and see the rack. Nope, we can't look in there and see it. But here we go, folks. Dennis will be breaking them up here for game nine. For those of you just tuning in, you're watching the Seminole Pro Tour. We're here live at Fiddlesticks Billiard Cafe in Canton, Ohio. This is an Inside Pool production. I'm JR from Inside Pool Magazine, and joining me in the booth is Angel Paglia. Angel, is this match turning out the way we thought? We thought it was going to be extremely close, and I think it's a little bit closer than what the score says, to tell you the truth. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd like, you know, to see the comfort level with both of the players. Um, being there just uh, I think it would change a little bit you know what I mean just the energy of the match itself Alex just seems like he's been really fighting 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 for everything that he's that he's getting but yeah definitely if uh, if Alex wouldn't have missed um, the key ball I mean this could be a really tight set here I believe it so here um, this is actually a good you know kick to the bottom rail up and hit the one you can send the key ball back towards the two or he could push out. But then if he pushes out, it's going to be a really easy safety here, wouldn't it be, for for Dennis? Well, I, I actually think that it's not as easy as what we give it. But uh, you can bank the two ball, I mean the one ball, up by the two and send the cue ball. Um, back to where it's yeah, at? Yeah, back, back towards, you know, the area of the three. Mm -hmm. Or back where it's at, of course, too. Yeah, the, the only problem that, that I see there is that you have a fairly decent kick in return where you can go two rails into the corner, nick the one, and meet, beat the 6-9 on the way up. So let's see what happens out of this, if there is a kick. I thought he was going to put it more on the two. But let's take a look and see what we got downtown here. Downtown's looking pretty good here. I think Dennis, uh, at this point, wishes he had taken the ball, <laughs> taken the shot. Yeah, it seemed like a relatively simple safety, but... Uh... Hit the top of it. That's a good shot. And I would just probably kick at this just to thin the one. But you don't want to bang it, bank it up to get to the corner. I got a little double kiss there. Excellent. You know, one of the tricks um, to cross banking a ball when it's in the pocket is if you can't get the cue ball past the object ball into the pocket, mm -hmm. that's how you know it's going to be a double kiss. Right. When I started looking at it that way, I don't double kiss balls anymore. Yeah, but I didn't know it was such a simple thing. It's, uh, I mean, we, it's almost a no-brainer. We teach that to people every week yeah. because that's one of the, the steadfast rules that you have to know mm -hmm. when you're playing. If you can't shoot it past the pocket or past the ball into the pocket, there's a kiss there. Mm -hmm. So you have to do something with it. And yeah. once you start to realize that, you look at the game so much easier when you start to do those kick safes and, or those bank safes. 
Well, Alex is taking his time here. He's still working. He's still running. He certainly hasn't given up. He just wants something to get him going. But the table's really, you know, I don't know how many chances he's going to get to have a go at it. So... What's, we need a score update on uh, Rodney Morris. Okay. And, okay. So Rodney now has six. I believe it's seven six now. Darren with Rodney Brayton. So the safeties haven't been strong enough to deter Hatch from. Will he put him under the 10 here? Is that what you see? Oh, he was kicking at this ball? Yeah, he was trying to kick at it. And the six is in trouble. Yeah, it's kind of... Uh, maybe he's being aggressive just because he feels like Alex is just spiraling himself, you know, into a coma as each shot doesn't, you know, react the way he wants it to. But... Um, he can recover from this very shortly. He just needs a few shots. This is a great shot by Alex. Is he going to leave a breakout or be able to get He's perfect. clip it? See, I, I love these shots just where you make it and you clip it. You don't just have to break out into it. You just clip the six and set yourself up for a perfect shot right there. You can't hook yourself. Um, well, you want to hit the nine here more than anything. And okay, well, I didn't think he had that deep of an angle. I'm sorry, but That's yes, right. absolutely. Well, anytime you do a breakout, the rule of thumb is you don't hit that ball that you're getting position on. You hit the ball, that, the other ball, so to speak. Uh, so generally, yeah, you would hit the nine ball there and try and get position on the six. Yeah, I think he's... he just double-kissed the, the ball there. Well, yeah, because then, you know, when you're missing all these balls... You focus even harder on how you're aiming the cue ball and you're aiming the object ball that sometimes you can tap it. You can tap the cue ball. It happens to me. Well, Dennis is doing a pretty simple rule, when in doubt, yeah. follow the ball. But, you know, just so the fans at home know what happened there, Dennis called a foul. Uh, Alex double hit the cue after pocketing the six. Yeah, we have some people that know that I've done some straight pull lessons. <laughs> uh, one of my big claims to fame is I, when Johnny had no idea how to play straight pull, I took him for a week up at Starcher's Billiards here in Akron and gave him straight pull lessons. And he went off and uh, ran, won the world all around uh, over in Cleveland, Frank Zumo's tournament, immediately following that. Ran 149 and out on Nick Varner. Oh, wow. And, uh, Walked in the door at Starcher's, very funny story, is uh, uh, Mike LeBron, Howard Vickery, Alan Hopkins, they're all just laughing at Johnny. Johnny is betting him something simple like $20 or whatever that he can run with a break shot, 10 balls, and he was just couldn't do it, just giving away money, and they were laughing at him because, you know, he was a, a quite the name for himself as a nine-ball player at the time. And afterwards, he came up and he says, I don't know how to play straight pool. Would you show me? And I said, yeah, I, I, I got an idea how to play this game. So for about a week, the fans stands filled up while we taught Johnny how to play straight pool there. It was pretty fun. That's great. But big rule of thumb, always hit the other ball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't, don't try and sit, get position on a moving ball is the best way to... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it helped, uh, you know, to uh, have a guy who could run 100, 200 balls as your student. Trust me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he did run 200 balls for everybody. That's Brady amazing. Matthews 200. asked him to keep the run going, mm -hmm. and uh, what had happened, he made one ball, missed. Nick ran 36 balls and missed. 
Johnny got up and ran 149 and out, and the crowd asked him, great, he kind of egged them on, keep running, he made 200, and he just kind of blew a ball into the rail because he wanted to get out of there, he wanted to celebrate his tournament win. So, you know, it goes to show how good the guy is. He's only been playing straight pole a week, and he's running 200 balls. How good is the of a player is that? Incredible. Looks like we're going to take a break. We'll be able to watch Darren Appleton pocket, or at least attempt to pocket this ball in the background. And he missed it, and I believe that that would have put him on the hill. I think so, too. He did not leave, uh, leave Rodney a great shot here. No, he didn't. From the distance, it looks like he can just make it in the side pretty easily. But from a couple other views, folks, it's not easy at all. Yeah, this is, you see how he's down? It looks like it's hanging in the side from our angle on the camera, but you and I can see this. Wow, wow. he made a fantastic shot. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> oh, wow. That'll give you an idea how it. tight these side pockets are. It's yeah. just amazing how tight they are. They're, they're very <laughs> tight. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney was playing second base there for a yeah. second, Darren. Well, I mean, that's a huge game, keeping uh, Darren off of the hill. Huge. It's huge. Huge game, well. And gaining one for yourself. I believe it makes it 7-7. Seven, seven. Yep, I believe so, too. 8-6, 7-7. Seven, seven. Slight difference. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Take a second here and thank one of our sponsors. I'm John Hendrick, pool player and owner of the Green Room in Pineville, North Carolina. My serious players demand quality, and that's why I've switched to Millican Super Pro. This cloth plays at the perfect speed. It lasts a long time, and the spill guard protection saves my tables from stains. It saves me money, and my customers love it. Millican Super Pro, exclusively from Sterling Gaming. Millican's got me covered. How about you? Welcome back. Break is over. Hatch is breaking. This is a race to nine if anybody just joined us. Rock your own. And the score update is 7-2 seven two. Oh, seven two. in favor of Dennis Hatch. Besides the great commentary, I gotta say we love having you in the booth. We get tasty green tea. That comes along. <laughs> I do bring organic tea to the tournaments, and I'm always empty by the time I go home. <laughs> Trust me, folks, it's a it's a good fringe benefit. Yeah, a lot of people think, you know, that most pool players don't like to do healthy things. They just assume that. But I think if it's there, they're gonna take it. If there's healthy food they're going to eat it i mean i'd like to see a whole setup like that for everybody you know what i mean for the tournaments and stuff just being able to be health conscious and stuff i think it'll happen it'll get there i haven't lost faith you know, a lot right. of people just say oh it's never going to change well it's never going to change if you never think it's going to change so yeah by saying it won't change you'll make that happen that yeah absolutely change. set it in stone another sponsor that comes through for this event that uh, we don't have a commercial for it, but we want to make sure that we you know we know that we support them is 11 good energy uh, great sponsor uh, great company ideas they've got uh, biodiesel that's going to change the world and uh, it's locally from this area and we really want to thank them for hanging out and helping us this weekend oh, absolutely See that connection, green tea? Yeah, green. and I, I'm reading a little bit on updates about it doing pattern clarity. So uh, may the good patterns come on. <laughs> I can honestly, No, I see it's happen. It's going to happen very, very shortly. Sure. I think Dennis is finally happy, but he's got a sore back. You see him rubbing his back from mm -hmm. trying to get those balls racked right. Well, I think the two challenging balls on racking on that table really are just the back two corners. That's what I've been hearing. Um, other than that, you know, the table's playing great and the table's racking great. It's just the, the back two corner balls. But 
this one's fantastic, but I don't think he's going to find anybody home. One's going to be covered up by the nine, and again, advantage hatch. All right. Well, Alex at the table, still fighting. Alex has been pushing out. He's not being as aggressive as he could could be, but this is a good good push out. I would go bottom ra um, short rail and kick safe. Yes, on the nine. And um, yeah, the two looks like it's in a little bit of trouble if you can't get underneath it. So uh, nice soft hit. Yeah. Uh, it got away from him, but yeah, he had uh, to hit a little fuller than that. I actually spin that ball in. I don't try and hit it without English. I want to make, by coming from a position more towards the seven, you get it to go through that hole, and it's a flatter ball. It kills. E even when it's a foot up, I always saw it possibly, and correct me if I'm wrong, but if it's closer to the rail, it's better to use spin. The farther that it's from the rail, it's better not to because it's harder to gauge if you're going to hit that object ball thin or thick or whatever you know what I mean that's just something that I was kind of like taught but I don't know if it's if it's necessarily true could just be the talent of the player or the com comfort comfortability of the player as well well it's where Phil comes in more. yeah do you it find is. it's easy for you when you do you find it easy like for them to always you know use a lot of spin when you have that big of a gap well when I was doing a lot of playing mm -hmm. I found that I could aim balls Mm -hmm. and I could feel balls and when I spun them I had to go into the heart of my mind that felt where I was hitting on the ball when I went flat I could actually aim them and uh, it's because the English goes different from you know table to table cue ball to cue ball you know that type of deal so anytime you get into a position like that, you better have a pretty darn good feel for how that ball comes off the rail. Now, this is a good shot here. You can play the one off the six in the side, but bring the cue ball back underneath the two. So you're going to leave a safety whether or not you make it or miss it. And Alex was looking at that the very first shot. He was looking at it. He was going to play it. He had the bottom right on the cue ball, and then he decided to cross bank it. And it uh, broke the two out and left Dennis a shot kind of difficult to get on and it's gonna have a three ball combo but I like the other shot because I saw Johnny make that shot earlier this tournament and mm -hmm. it's kind of nice as long as you can put the cue ball in jail at the same time and play a two-way shot but right so here he's just gonna have to shoot it up in the corner or shoot it in the sign and, and come around but even shooting it up in the corner and bringing it back over this three ball combo isn't that difficult with the four hanging in the hole How good does Dennis Hatch play, folks? <laughs> yeah, he sees the angles really, really great, and and you caught on to that shot immediately. You saw that. Yeah, he's just going to stuff him underneath. And safety. Very few. So even instead of running out, he chose to just keep Alex in a coma. You know, if Alex is in one, but you know what I'm saying. If it's almost like torture. It's like Dennis is good enough to run out, but he didn't. Why didn't he? This would be the equivalent uh, in basketball, I think, of a full court press. He doesn't want to let Alex sniff at a makeable mm -hmm. ball. He wants Alex either kicking or playing safe. That's all he wants. Mm -hmm. As far as, And Dennis feels as long as he's doing that, he's accomplished what he needs to do. Mm -hmm. He should be able to go to the, to the finish line before Alex. Well, there's a couple options here with uh, Dennis, and I, I didn't see that one. I think he was trying to miss it, but if he missed the 10, he still would have been playing a three-ball combination again, which goes back to he didn't want to play the other three-ball combination. Right. He didn't. And but it, now he was willing to do it. The, that eight ball is going to suddenly become a big ball. Here's what's going to probably happen. Uh, unless he plays this shot softly, He'll make the three, four, five, the th but the three can be tied up on the eight. Mm. Oh. What a fantastic what shot. A great shot. Controlled four balls, same time. Wow. Broke it out, created everything, perfect speed to not tie up the 510. Couldn't have worked out any better than that. And, boy, I'll tell you, everything at this point here is in place, huh? That was good. He went to go make sure that seven ball went. <laughs> he doubted it pretty quick. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you don't want to find out when you're on the six ball. Yeah. And it looks like some things were happening while we were commentating over here because uh, Rodney Morris is on the hill. And um, Darren, I believe, is at seven still. But he is at the table with a wide open rock. Right, I think we are preparing to watch Hill Hill as Dennis gets out of position, sets himself up for a right-handed shot. You're going to see him switch over here. Does that very well. And he's going to have a longer shot. You can see that he switches over very well, but he doesn't always have the same control. He's laughing. <laughs> like, I, I, since I hit this with like a brick. <laughs> You almost feel paralyzed if you don't practice a lot with your right or your left hand, whichever is the opposite. Uh, it always seems like their three fingers in their bridge hand are always stuck together, you know, when their other bridge hand is always separated. It's just funny, and they almost look like they're out of control. Dennis is looking to get the hill here. Yeah, and this just comes, you know, make this ball a million times in your life. No sweat. Routine. Well, this just hasn't been Alex's set. He just was not able to get anything going. Lack of focus in the beginning of the match. Very uncharacteristic for Alex. I'm sure he's really disappointed. Truly believe that you are right. I believe that this but is. But everybody's be human, you know. Sometimes it just happens like that. Sometimes the best of champions lose nine nothing. I remember uh, a top world champion that's ha that's won a world champion. I won't mention a name, but he said one time he he got up to a match, he missed every ball he shot at, every single ball. And this guy won a world championship. He missed every ball he shot at. He said, I didn't know what the heck was wrong with me. I couldn't figure out my fundamentals. The timing on my swing was off. I couldn't get comfortable. It's pretty amazing. People think that doesn't happen, but it does. We just don't always see it. Yeah. That's why we need more streaming. JR, you got to get out. You got to stream everything. I got to be out on the road every week. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all appreciate what year. you do for the game and, and the fact that people can watch it from the comforts of their own home. We know traveling can be pretty hard if they're they aren't competitors themselves. And so, uh, what you do is a great, great, great thing. Well, thank Even you when it doesn't much. work out sometimes and you have problems with the internet connection, which it's not always in your control ever. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's completely out of your control. You know, and you guys are probably more upset than they're upset when things don't work out. But how often does it not work out? Rarely ever. It was yesterday. You guys that are fantastic, you know? Right. It's we got perfect like curve. today. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, Jim, I've never seen it mess up, ever. And I've been around, you know, quite a bit. Yeah, we've actually, uh, we have a pretty darn good record. Uh, it, it, it takes the perfect storm to take us down. We ha usually have our contingency plans our backup plans and everything's ready to rock at a moment's notice. But, uh, you know, we, we like it because we get people all over the country uh, telling us that they hook our, our stream up right to their big screen TVs. What a shot. It was. But you see how just nothing quite is right with Alex right now? It's mm. his, the speed is just off just a little bit. It's just not just quite Just a hair there. because Alex nails those always. Speaking of which, mm -hmm. and, Den little... and Dennis, I mean, isn't giving him a, a breather. He isn't going for anything crazy. He's playing safeties, whether or not they're tight safeties or not. He is just not. I mean, he wanted to win this eight minus three. Right. That's the, or nine minus three. I mean, that's how De Dennis is playing. Like that's how bad he wanted to he win the wanted match. Alex to owe games the game. at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You've been playing too much one pocket. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. I mean, just he would give it, take negative. He would take games from him if he could. Exactly, exactly. Well, I think he's led Alex on the board here. I, I, I don't really foresee any mm -hmm. issue except for the two to the three, and then the three to the four. Mm -hmm. Other than that, these should take their places for a player like Alex. I'd really like to see him run out this rack, you know. I'd like to see him get a get a good feel of the game. It's a lot of pressure out there, no matter how good of a player you are. You want to show up. We all want to show up. There's nothing more devastating than to get out there and for yourself, not for other people, but for yourself. And 
nice little confident punch there with a, a beautiful angle on the four. I mean, just barely enough. He'll bring it right back for the five. Now, I'm not sure whether we have Hill Hill next on, to us on this table or not. Darren Appleton is kicking at the three ball. Oh. Yeah. Well, folks, in my opinion, I still think he's moving right when he hits that cue ball, but he could be moving after it. Could be something as simple as that. Sometimes you just aren't seeing the ball. You know when you miss the stroke, you feel it. It doesn't Yeah, even, it's like it a timing in your make. swing. It's like you're not pushing the balls in the pockets, and it happens to the best, best players. So did he scratch? No, I don't think so. Okay, he was acting like there was a fear there. Meanwhile, I thought that was one of the best shots ever, and now he's straight in. So he might have to duplicate that shot. Yeah, he's going to have up. to work with the fork for this one. Yeah, roll up. Cut the six in. He's looking to make sure that there's a place there where he gets a two-way out of it. Show you guys some of the shots from the background there. Darren Appleton at the table right now. See, I like even putting a little bit of insight on this. Not much, but just a tad bit of ins insight to try to straighten this out. And that's a really hard shot to do, but he didn't put any English on it. He just made the ball. But as I've been working with Earl, you know, and when I was younger, I was spinning the ball all over the place. Um, and I got away from that for a while. But hitting that with inside, I thought I was crazy. He told me, no, spin your ball. Put the oh. cue ball where you want it. You know, but he would have had an easier shot had he made it a little bit more difficult. But then people all think, well, shoot it the easiest way. Right. But if he had a little insight, he wouldn't have left himself that. Right. 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 But, I mean, it's a matter of preference, I guess, whether or not you want to be that aggressive. Shoot it 10 million times. There's only, like, three players on tour that actually shoot that ball with inside. Well, generally, inside English is one of those Englishes, unless you play a lot of billiards or you follow the ball a lot, you never really get into inside English. And I don't think Alex gave up on that one. I think he's just, now he's given up. He, I think he's unscrewing his stick. And I don't know whether <laughs> Dennis doesn't even look like he's, he's just kind of like, well, my, yeah, do I, I have think, to shoot these? Yeah, Dennis is looking a little weirded out. Should I shoot him or not? But that inside English, though, nobody shoots that better than Earl, though. Earl I'm telling you, the shot. inside English, and that's where he maybe shoot it like a hundred times. I mean, you have to believe you can do it, but it's he shoots him better than anybody. <laughs> well, Dennis right, is swinging so. it around table. He pretty much knew that Alex had uh, given him the game. Well, that's the match here, and on this other this other rack here, it looks like uh, Rodney is not too happy about losing that game from uh, Darren kicking that ball, and this looks like it's a hill hill match now. We're going to let the cameras rolling, and we'll keep talking about this match, but we'll close out this one. We want to thank everybody for showing up, all of our viewers, our moderators, all of our sponsors, including the Seminole Tribe of Florida, Seminole Media, Media Productions, Universal Pool League, Grand Touring Vodka, Fury Cues, Millican Super Pro Cloth, Hustlin' USA Clothing, Kamui Tips, Delta 13, and Pool Dog. Folks, thanks for showing up. We're going to get Earl Strickland and Johnny Archer rolling your way at the 4 o'clock time frame. In the meantime, let's watch the match in the background to see who's going to be going up against Dennis Hatton. Now, I'm so excited for this match coming up, too. It's going to be a great one.